and what a difference today makes. As a lady who had a special reason to listen when E.F. Hutton talked, and that's because he was her daddy. But she didn't listen every time or she wouldn't have gone into show business, and that would have been uh, too bad for all of us. Please welcome actress and vice chairman of RKO Pictures, Dina Merrill. who shared her home with a dummy. And don't we all sort of feel that way sometimes? But the dummy that I am referring to was Charlie McCarthy and his creator, the great Edgar Bergen, my guest's uh, husband. Please welcome Murphy Brown's real life mom and an accomplished model and actress in her own right, Frances Bergen. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Hollywood kisses. Oh, yes. Well, no, join Dina. <laughs> Next is a gal who got started at the age of six and received an Academy Award nomination for her role as Joan Crawford's daughter in Mildred Pierce. I wonder if she got any combat pay for that. We'll, we'll find out. Please welcome Anne Blythe. A great looking lady who's done lots of theater and movies and maybe best known to us as the gorgeous ghost in the TV series Topper. Ladies and gentlemen, Anne Jeffries. Thank you. Oh, here you are, well, yeah, if you want to interview, you could sit right here. <laughs> yeah, I might. You want to interview? Sure. I don't think I'm a timeless beauty. <laughs> you have to sit down. You have to sit you down You haven't there. lived long enough yet. <laughs> I don't know. Gosh, I'll never make it the way you guys look. First of all, you all look fabulous. Thank you. You, Thank you. really do. <laughs> shoes, too. Got some good shoe colors going on. How'd you get started in this business? I mean, your parents really didn't want you to do this, did they? No, my dad wanted me to be a lawyer and run for Congress. So. Oh, thank God you didn't do that. I'm glad I didn't. Oh, really? <laughs> this is a much more honest profession. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> well, you know what I call 50 attorneys at the bottom of the ocean? A damn good start. <laughs> Well, I started in school, you know, doing all the school plays and stuff, and, and then I became an apprentice in a stock company, and then I started, I went to drama school, started knocking on doors, and to finally, you know, uh, somebody said to me, oh, they all would say, well, when you get some experience, why don't you come back? And I said, okay. After the twelfth one, I was, to my utmost mortification, I burst into tears. And I said, how am I going to get started if nobody will give me a job like this? And she looked at me and she said, well, I guess you have a point. She said, all right, tell you what, I'll hire you and you come up. And this was in Newport, Rhode Island, the casino theater in Summer Stock. And she said, I'll, I'll try you for three days. And if you're terrible, you can pay your way home. And I said, you've got a deal. And that's what, how I started. But all of this against your parents' better wishes. Mm -hmm. So they didn't help you a lot, huh? No. <laughs> no, they didn't. What but that you? was fine, you know. Yeah. What about you, Francis? How'd you start? I started uh, actually modeling in New York, um, in the Stone Age. Um, there was an agency, John Robert Powers, who was, it was commercial photography. And I went to New York and uh, started out modeling. And I'm then... just looking at yourself over here. Look at oh. you. <laughs> That's oh, a pretty gosh. old picture. <laughs> How old are you in this picture? Uh, Twelve. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you and, you and Candace really sure. look a lot alike, don't you? <laughs> Yeah. I guess so. Yeah. That's quite a while ago. <laughs> so you started as a model. Mm -hmm. And then what? Well, I w always wanted to sing. And I had a um, oh, fairly brief singing career, uh, singing in... I always loved to call them saloons, but my southern-born mother always didn't <laughs> like that term. So I said, well, nightclubs, you know, that sounded better than <laughs> saloons. But they were high-class saloons. See, that's though. what I was going to ask next. Like, what kind of an upbringing? Just a, a rural southern family, or what? Uh, I was born in Birmingham, Alabama, and um, a very, well, middle-class, average family. And uh, was an only child, and then my mother and I moved to California when I was about 10 years old. My father had passed away, and then I... Uh, went to New York later on and uh, started the modeling and then I went to the singing and then I uh, got married so I stopped modeling and stopped singing. Did you sort of run off to pursue your dreams as well? 
Yes, I did. Um, well, my mother was off from my going to New York, only she was afraid of the little southern girl in the great big city. The big bad wolf. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I'll never forget my first time to New York. I was walking around looking up at the skyscrapers, and it was big time stuff for me. And I was very lucky. I got some good bookings and, uh, and became the Chesterfield girl. I hesitate saying that today with the way people's attitudes are about smoking, but smoking was very accepted then. Right. And right. Um, anyway, that was a big account. and that, So I was saving my money up to come home right. and uh, did that. What about you, Anne? How'd you get started? I started in radio when I was six. Wow. I auditioned for a children's radio program, and it was called Coast to Coast on a Bus. And I remember huh. standing on an apple box because I was tiny so that I could reach the microphone. And I, I stayed there for about five years. Now, could you sing that as good as you can now back then? Well, they called it singing. I would just, uh, I would qualify that. <laughs> But six years old, so you, your parents sort of pushed you out there, huh? Well, my mother, I think, um, felt that I had some sort of talent, and I think she was urged to take me to this particular audition. Yes. And uh, lots of wonderful things happened after that. I did um, several seasons with the Children's Opera Company, with the San Carlo Opera Company, mm -hmm. and then I was in Watch on the Rhine, which was a wonderful Broadway play. Yeah. Best known for your role in Mildred Pierce, do you think? Oh, I think so. And yeah. I'm, I'm very happy that so many people still remember it. That was a long time ago. We did that on the Burnett Show. You know, we still love to do you movie did. Time. did you ever see it? I know you did. I got to play you. <laughs> I was flattered. I loved it. I, would I you like to it. see it? Of course. Okay, well, we have it. I I it. <laughs> no contract, no contact. No ring, no ring a ding ding. <laughs> All right, let's see your legs. I beg your pardon, Vida. <laughs> Very nice gams, but I'm sorry. Marriage is not for Monty Slick. <sighs> oh, and I don't blame you, Mr. Slick, why you'd be taking on a wife and a daughter in the flower of her youth, both living there in the same mansion with you. <laughs> on the other hand, uh, marriage might uh, make a nice change of pace. <laughs> Darling. <laughs> I missed my calling. Why, Vida? <laughs> Anne, how did you get started? You want to go back that far? Yes, absolutely. Well, my mother was a frustrated opera singer. I also came from a very old Southern family. They didn't approve of a young lady going on the stage, so they thwarted my mother's ambition. And she discovered that at an age of one and a half that I could carry a tune. And so she said, ah, oh, my singer. And from then on, I was coached, I was uh, prepared for, I sang my first time in public when I was five. And I remember singing a little song, under the stars one holy night. And my little knees were just knocking so hard. <laughs> I was so nervous, I could hear my mother breathing in the back of the house. Every time I took a breath, I could hear her going, I don't know whether it was <laughs> She just, was helping you. Of course. Yeah. But she used to say, my little Anne, she is never nervous. I'm just so proud of her. And to this day, I never told her that I was ever nervous that you were in anything that I did. Yes. I didn't know you were a trained opera singer. Though. Oh, yes. Well, I had a radio show of my own, too. It's songs, 15 minutes of song when I was 10. And then I went to New York to study for opera. Can you get and a high note for us? <laughs> That'll do it. That'll do it. There. We're going to take a break and we're going to be back and find out uh, how these gals met the loves of their lives and we have a surprise call for one of the girls. We'll be back in a minute. When I get a yeast infection, it's internal, so I buy one of these. But for a burning external itch, I use Vagisil cream to stop it instantly. Developed with a gynecologist, Vagisil works directly on the burning itch. These don't. And if Vagisil can stop my itch, Vagisil can stop any minor feminine itching instantly. 
For feminine moisture problems, I trust Vagisil powder. Vagisil absorbs moisture, absorbs odor, helps keep you dry, odor-free. Vagisil feminine powder. Ice cream, you scream. We all scream for ice cream. <clears throat> we all scream for ice cream. Yeah! Thank you. Hershey's chocolate syrup. It was my first serious dinner at his family's. So much food. <laughs> this is Greg's favorite dish. Oh, <laughs> and my first serious heartburn. Excuse me. And I learned some things. Oh, no, these are different. Tums has calcium. Most antacids don't. Of all these, the only one that helps wipe out heartburn and gives you calcium you need every day is Tums. Something my body needs anyway. I like that. Calcium-rich Tums. It's coming. Grape Nuts Discover the Difference Week. You'll discover... I feel great all morning. Discover what a good breakfast with Grape Nuts can do. The fat-free natural energy source. I love this energy. Look for displays for Grape Nuts Discover the Difference Week. Great look. Beautiful hair. And only weeks ago, she came to my salon with a problem. Dandruff. So I showed her what Head & Shoulders can do. We washed half her hair with regular shampoo. The other half with Head & Shoulders. The result? Regular shampoo side, dandruff. Head and shoulders side, flake free. Looking good, Sally. Thanks to you. Head and shoulders, because beautiful hair can't have flakes. Chopper. as Marion Kirby, the loveliest ghost in town, and Jeffries. As George Kirby, the liveliest ghost in town, Robert Sterling, and Leo G. Carroll as Topper. Dina Merrill, Francis Bergen, Ann Blythe, and Ann Jeffries. And uh, Francis, how did you meet Edgar? Was he a good deal older than you? Yes. You were a baby. Yes, I was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, there was quite an age difference. Um, are you sure you want to hear this? It's so hokey, it sounds like a press I know, it does. It I know. <laughs> well, I was always a Charlie fan, and as a matter of fact, I used to... I, well, I wasn't that immature, but I slept with a Charlie doll. Um, well, I what? should explain that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was very... Now, just a minute. <laughs> I was in an automobile accident, and I had to be in bed for quite a while, and this was given to me, and so it was comforting to me oh. to have Charlie okay. They weren't doing anything. Son. They were just sleeping so together. That's what she says, yeah. right? Well, I didn't know he was going to be sleeping with his father someday, but anyway, <laughs> I went to... Uh, I met... Um, the head, uh, the wife of, of his head writer at the time, and she asked if I'd like to go to a radio show. And I was in seventh heaven. I said, oh, yes, I've always been a Charlie fan. So we sat in the front row, and um, then, well, in those days, the skirts were very short. And, yes, uh, they're back. <laughs> they're back. I just remember. They come and they go, and they're back. <laughs> anyway, he called us backstage after and he called Jean this girl over and he wanted to know who the girl was with the long legs the 19 year old girl <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say they that. were pretty just long so that's how we met well that's the same thing guys <laughs> love long legs so that you that spawned your uh, yes, relationship yes, but he was a tough one to land was so he? he was a bachelor I mean he was uh, like 40. a confirmed bachelor you oh mean? confirmed he was yeah. never going to be married he thought and he was, well, he was 42 when we were married. How soon? And you were 19? 20? Mm -hmm. How old? Uh, I met him the day after my 19th birthday. Whoa. How soon after that did you have Candace? Very soon. Yeah? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, we were married about a year. As a matter of fact, uh, she was born in May. We were married in June. She was born the following May. And, and she got it confused when she was little. She used to say, I was born in May and my mother and my mom and dad were married in June. <laughs> but she didn't bother to explain that it she was the following She couldn't figure, year. yeah, no. not a bright girl. <laughs> no, was, she a, was she a handful to raise? No, she was fun. 
she was, uh, she certainly wasn't dull, but, but she was not a problem ever. You know, she, uh, she was always a very uh, curious, um, healthy curiosity, fortunately. And, and always interested in so many things. Did you know she was going to grow up to be Candace Bergen? Didn't have a clue. No? <laughs> well, she actually wasn't interested in the business per se. And um, then she was called, um, a, a man named Sidney, Sidney Lumet, director, saw her in a restaurant in New York and was casting a picture. Her part had already been cast, but he said, I've got to have her. He found out who she was, and she made her first film. And you weren't Larry of old Sydney at all? <coughs> um, <laughs> well, I didn't know then what I know now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, let's see what your daughter has to say about this. Candace, are you there? Yes, I am. Sure, How are you? you? <laughs> well... <laughs> Yeah, we have a way of embarrassing people on this show. We like to do that. I, I am here, and I would just like to say that my mother is being generous beyond all words. I was an incredible handful to raise, and I have someone else who wanted to say something. Oh, okay. You're a very wonderful grandmother. <laughs> oh, is this Chloe? No. It's that, Chloe. That was Chloe. She, she's phone shy, but, but she wanted to put in her two cents. We can hear she's very shy. <laughs> Is it great being a grandma? It's just wonderful. How old is Chloe now? <laughs> Chloe was seven last November, and when? she's a handful. <laughs> Do you hear me, Chloe? <laughs> well, when the did, chickens come home to roost. When did Grandma well. and Chloe get together last? What? Sorry? When did Grandma and Chloe get together last? Chloe spent Friday night at Grandma's house. That's oh, right. yeah? God bless Grandma's, right? <laughs> Well, thank you for calling in and saying hi to us, Candace. You well, you're welcome. Chloe and well, thank you, sweet thing. I didn't have a clue about this. <laughs> well, Mom, and, and hi, Deanie, and hi, girl. I'm okay. And have a wonderful show. And, Mom, uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> we love you. Bye-bye. <laughs> and that's a big, I said you had one surprise. That's a, that's a hi, girl. Now, is this what Candace grew up with, with all these people around all the time? Oh, sure. Deanie's known Candy sure. for a long Dears. time. Sure. Deanie. That's my nickname. I guess, yeah. <laughs> this, is, this, was, this, is, this is life growing up in Beverly Hills, yeah? Uh, oh, yes. Very much so. Yeah. No, but they, they were in, in New York and, you know, Europe and Washington, Washington and all kinds of things. I think you met her first in New York. We were on a trip yes. there. We yeah. always traveled a lot. Yeah. Huh? And you married a long time? We'll celebrate our 40th wedding anniversary this June. Unbelievable. I mean, by any standards, let alone this town. How did yes, you meet? It's very special. How did you very meet special. him? I met him through his darling brother, Dennis Day. Now, and, jog those memories, kids. And Dennis, Do we all remember Dennis Day? He yes. came from quite a large family. Yeah. And Dennis and I were doing quite a few different charities uh -huh. together. And he said, I have a brother at home. I think you two should meet. And we did. And it, was it love at first sight? Oh, I don't think so. No? No. no. But we, 40 years. But 40 and how many years, kids? Five. And five grandchildren. Wow. <laughs> I, I, I enjoyed every moment. <laughs> we have to take a break, though. And uh, the tabloids constantly link one of these lovely ladies with one of Hollywood's longtime bachelors, and her husband says, that's okay. We're going to find out who that is when we come back. Wish your favorite soap stud could jump out of his world and into yours? There is a god. Well, stop wishing and turn on the next Vicky. I can't take any more of this. Oh, go behind the scenes and between the sheets with hunts from General Hospital, The Young and the Restless, and Days of Our Lives. In the heat of the moment, her breast popped out of her. <laughs> Who's DA? On the next Vicky. Three. Do you want me to tell you what's happening on your program? <laughs> there have been people that do that. Channel 11, WPIX New York, a Tribune Broadcasting Station. Hey, if you're going to break the rules, 
This is the way to do it. The next time I have to come in here, I'm cracking skulls. The Brat Pack is back. You're a neo maxi zoom dweeby. With Emilio Estevez, Molly Ringwald, Anthony Michael Hall, Judd Nelson, and Ali Sheedy. From the creator of Home Alone. What was that ruckus? Can you describe the ruckus, sir? The Breakfast Club. Tonight at 8 on Channel 11. Now's the best time to order cable TV because of what you say. It's what you see. Installation is now just $7.95. It's what you say. It's what you see. Like world events as they happen on CNN. Eric Clapton unplugged on MTV. Championship excitement on USA and ESPN. It's what you say. The fact is, $7.95 is a great deal. It's what you see. Like the star-studded excitement of the premium channel. HBO. Showtime. Cinemax. The Movie Channel. So don't wait. Pick up your phone and call. Hey! Call 1-800-OK-CABLE and get installation for only $7.95 when you subscribe to cable and premium TV. Don't miss out on this great deal. Call today. And remember, it's what you say. <laughs> it's what you say. Cable TV and say. the premium what channels. What Call now and see what you save. Roaches. They keep coming back because they may be immune to your insecticides. So we developed new Combat Superbait Insecticide. Both our lab and home tests prove no roach is immune. Here's how it works. Roaches enter the disc, eat the bait, and carry it back to their nest. Then behind the wall, they start a domino effect. It keeps on killing other roaches for three months. But we weren't satisfied with lab tests alone. We tested it in homes and proved no roach is immune. To learn more about controlling your roach problem, call our information center here at the Combat Lab. We'll send you a free booklet. It contains expert information based on years of research telling you how to use Combat Superbait for maximum effectiveness. We're so sure it'll work for you, we guarantee it. Or we'll give you your money back. So look for the gold box, new Combat Superbait. We've made a science of killing your roaches. Griffin, don't ask. Don't ask you don't know, or don't ask I don't want to know. Just don't ask. Look, if it's, if it's Reggie Goldman you're concerned about, forget it. But be nice to him. He represents a lot of money for It's not Reggie Goldman I'm worried about. It's Larry Levy. Larry Levy? Larry Levy's at Fox, isn't he? Oh. Oh, come on, Celia. And Jeffries, all classic beauties. You were so good in that movie. You, I've run into Thank that you. woman several times <laughs> in this town. <laughs> you were just wonderful. T uh, tell me about how you met Robert Sterling. Ann? Oh, well, uh, actually, the first time I really met him was on Broadway. I was playing Kiss Me Kate at Schubert Theater, and he was at the Morosco Theater. And uh, he, I was in Sardi's one night with my aunt an uncle from North Carolina, Uncle Robert Jeffries and Lucy Jeffries, and uh, Thelma Jeffries. And we were sitting at the table, and my aunt and uncle looking around. This is after the show. We all go in there and dine at late after the theater. And they're looking around and say, Ann, this is very nice, but I don't see any movie stars. And they're looking all around, and I say, oh, dear, dear, there must be some. Well, uh, uh, and just then I saw Robert Sterling sitting over at the bar. And uh, I kind of went, hi. And of course, he walked over and said, hi. And I said, I'd like for you to meet my Aunt Thelma and my Uncle Robert, you know, from Goldsboro, North Carolina. And he said, oh, how do you do? And I said, he said, uh, hey, how about having dinner with me? And I said, oh, no, 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 thank you, thank you. But I, I, <laughs> so he went on to the men's room. Then he came back by the table. And I was going with somebody. I had been going with him for four years. So I had no interest in Robert Sterling whatsoever. So when he came back by, he said, uh, give me a phone number and I'll call you. And I didn't want to embarrass my aunt, aunt and uncle, so I gave him the phone number. I thought, he'll never call, hopefully. And he knows I'm going steady because our best friend, John Springer, that introduced us, he knew I was going steady, but apparently he didn't. <laughs> anyway, he kept pursuing me, and finally I said one time, uh, he said, I guess I've got the hint. I can take a hint. I started to walk out of my dressing room door, and I said to my mate, call him back. 
I've got two tickets to the King and I for the first Act as Fun benefit, when, you know, which is such an exciting night. Everybody's really up and on. And uh, I called him back and I said, all right, you want to go? And he said, oh, yeah. I said, all right, see you in two weeks. Well, it was spring and it was romantic and it's a wonderful show. And we sat there and looked at all this beauty and this beautiful music and it was love was in the air, you know? <laughs> and I was all dressed in white with a white box cape. And we oh, had so a limo. Not to attract we him, had right? a limo <laughs> to drive us to the store club. And when he took me home that night, he got out of the limo and he walked me up to my door and he, he said, uh, Hey, and I turned around and he gave me the nicest kiss, very soft and very romantic and lovely. And he said, have you got any plans? And I said, well, I, 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 and he said, don't make any, I'm taking over. And there he did. <laughs> and that did. was that. And six, six months later, we were married. For how long now? 41 years. <laughs> easy. My mother picked him for me, and she, mother was always right. Yeah. So now, are know. there kids? Oh, yes. I have three grown sons, and I have three and a half grandchildren. <laughs> three, three and a half grandchildren? One you got a bun way. in the oven, then, you mean, yes, somewhere? Yes, the bun yes. in the oven. Now, the tabloids are always linking you with Cesar Romero, is that right? <laughs> Isn't that funny? How does that happen? <laughs> Well, you see, he's a wonderful friend. He's been a friend of Robert's and a friend of mine for years and years and years. And uh, Robert is very antisocial. He's very shy. He loves to read, and he hates going out. If it's over 10 people at a dinner party, he'll usually renege. And I love to go. See, opposites attract. And I'm on the go all the time, always up and at him and ready for anything, and Robert's very shy and holds back. So I'm very involved in all these charity things, and I... I said, come on, honey, let's go. And he said, oh, please don't make me go. And then we'd go, and he wanted to leave before it was over. You know this. Thing. And uh, so finally he said, hey, I'll make an agreement with you. You can go anywhere you want, with anybody you want, just as long as you don't make me go any time you want to go. So I said, okay, that's a deal. So I went to a few things by myself, and then one time I ran into Cesar Romero. And I said, uh, oh, are you all alone? He said, yes. And I said, well, so am I. So we started talking. And I said, are you going to that thing next Friday? And he said, yes, I am. And I said, are you going with anybody? He said, no. I said, well, neither am I. So he says, why don't we go together? So that started. So this is how it started. Yep. And the tabloids called me one time. And they said, uh, there's a rumor going around that uh, you and Cesar Romero, there's, uh, you know, nobody sees your husband anymore. Is is something going on? I said, you've got to be kidding. He's a wonderful, lovely gentleman and fun to be with. He's old enough to be my father, number one. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm very happily married, number two. So that's the real saga behind Caesar yes. and Anne. Dina, Loving you're dearly. married now how long? I beg your pardon? How long are you married now? Uh, I'm married for three years. Two? Ted Hartley. Yes, and uh, tell everybody who Ted is. Ted Hartley is chairman of RKO Pictures. Right. Now, what, you're a, a, probably a really good person to ask here because you have worked pretty steadily all along. Differences in Hollywood then and now? Do you see major differences? Um, well, yeah, some. I mean, the, the, the business, I think, is controlled more by agents now, you know, than it was when I was starting out. But um, it, it used to make me laugh because I came from the East. And um, friends of mine would say, oh, you're going to Hollywood, you're going to work in Hollywood. Oh, tell us about those wonderful Hollywood parties. Well, you know what it's like when you do films. You're up at 5 in the morning and you're in bed at 9.30. And I said, what Hollywood parties? I don't go, to, I don't have time. I can't go to any Hollywood parties. And, you know, so. So you have no stories about the glamorous side of Hollywood? Not too many. <laughs> <laughs> the working side, yes, but not. So I, see, I didn't live work, here. Yeah? I didn't yeah. live here, so I wasn't going or invited to those kinds of parties when one was at leisure, so to speak, right. because I went home. Well, of course. What about you, Francis? Because you guys were sort of considered ro what? Anne? No, what do you I was just say? going to say that when we all started in movies as well, you were working six days a week. That's right. You were you really? On, you worked on Saturdays as well. Good so Lord. Sunday was the day to do the laundry and go into a sleep and, oh, and, and sleep. Hopefully for a few extra hours. Wow, you're kidding! Well, it hard was hard a very busy we time. Went to a very lot busy of parties. Time. <laughs> you went. Well, you, I was going to say. Uh, you, the Bergens, were sort of we considered. <laughs> you were sort of considered Hollywood royalty. Yeah. 
Well, there, no, there were some unbelievable parties. Uh, well, tell given. us about them. Well, one time, Sonia Henney, does that name ring a bell? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Brought in the Dancing Waters, which I'm sure most of you may have seen sometime or other in a show. I mean, it's this elaborate set of water spouting up in the air. It's like, and they dance, they literally dance. And then, even before my time, with my husband, that is, um, there was a, a couple who gave a party in back, they lived in back of the Beverly Hills Hotel, and they had a ski slope made with fake snow, and you had to enter the party on a toboggan. You couldn't <laughs> walk or anything else. No and, kidding. Uh, they, and then, of course, Elsa Maxwell in those days, the great, great party giver. I mean, there were, there were just unbelievable things going on. You did pretty elaborate things for the kids back when Candace oh, was little, yes. too, yes? I'm very embarrassed to say yes. <laughs> because, they, oh, they were as much, I mean, uh, as the grown-up parties. We usually had a theme. Mm -hmm. One year, I remember we had a luau. This is like the fourth birthday, and we had little aloha shirts for the boys and little hula skirts for the girls. And then another <laughs> year, we got hold of a print from Walt Disney of Snow White and ran that, and then there were little Snow White charms for all the little girls and whatever. Yes, it was. There was some going on. It's just as well that's passed. <laughs> I, I do remember uh, going to Harold Lloyd's house because I had heard so much about his his wonderful house, and of course the Christmas tree that was always there. He never it stayed up all year. You know, stayed he never took it down. Year after year after year. And was it, and it was magnificent. Mm -hmm. It was a big tree. Well, I often th think every year when I put up our tree. Why don't I do that? <laughs> Just put it up and, and leave and, it up. And my husband looks at me and says, no, I don't think so. <laughs> we're going to take a little break now, but when we come back, we're going to hear some beauty tips on how these gals stay so gorgeous and how they've managed to turn back the hands of time, and we're going to find out what they're up to right now. We'll be back. <laughs> Call and let me know what you think about my show. And don't hold back. It's bad for your digestive system. Your comments, suggestions, and show ideas are all welcome. Just call 1-900-2850. That's 1-900-288-4254. Call costs 75 cents. It needs to be at least 18 to call. Because practice always lasts just a few more minutes. Introducing Minute Recipes. Recipes you make in 30 minutes or less. For delicious meals like stir-fried pepper steak. Just look on the back of the box. Minute Recipes. Great meals for the time you have. Beautiful live. Introducing Remarkable. Washable. Waterproof mascara. The full definition brush singles out every lash. Day beautiful lashes, you just wash away. Remarkable. Beautiful is new remarkable mascara. Defines lashes all day, then you just wash it away. Girl. Redefining beautiful. OJ, purple stuff, soda, Sunny Jack. Yeah, go for it. Tastes like orange and tangerine. And lime. Some healthy junk, too. <laughs> go. Instant replay. <laughs> Sunny Delight, the good stuff kids go for. I think kids today need to learn responsibility. Mine have dish night, and they do a great job. So there's no food like little tomato seeds left stuck on the plate. They always pre-rinse, and they never overload. No matter who does the dishes, Cascade does the dirty work. Dishes washed without sheeting action are left looking dirty. But Cascade with sheeting action gets them so clean, they're virtually spotless. Perfect. Every night should be dish night. When was the last time you had an irresistible hot fudge sundae? Or a fantabulabulous banana split? Pick any of our 30 wonderful flavors. And don't forget the nuts! <laughs> so come on, get that 30 wonderful feeling. Fungus. fungus. Brush away nail fungus with Lee Antifungal Nail Treatment. And for tips or repair, Lee Antifungal Instant Nail Glue. Lee, in the Nail Beauty Products section. For what's new... What's next in the world of skin science? Watch for Vaseline Intensive Care updates. From Intensive Research comes Intensive Care. Do you remember how I used to sing the way you look tonight? Mm. Like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. Let me see. Someday, when I'm awfully low and the world is cold, I will feel a glow just thinking of you and the way you look tonight. and Blythe and Ann Jeffries and they're all going to tell us now kids so stay tuned this is really important there are secrets for staying fit and beautiful okay Dina what is the secret <laughs> yeah well, you know what no everybody if they're sitting out here on the break going I Good think we jeans. should just have a we should Good have jeans. a contest who's got the best legs <laughs> well, listen, I don't know that would be a tough contest here <laughs> what is the answer uh, good genes I think I mean I, I had two thin parents and I'm an athlete. I play tennis. I play golf. I ski. Yes, and, yeah. You know, I don't know. <laughs> well, you're but a I athlete. eat a lot. I hate to tell you, but I eat three meals a day, but nothing in between. But three good meals a day. Oh, but she's such a disciplinarian. She doesn't eat all the things <laughs> I love that aren't good for you. You know, <laughs> she, she stays so away you eat, from but fat. you're very disciplined about it. Well, I was brought up on health foods, let's put it that way. Were you really? I mean, yeah. in a time when health foods weren't cool. No, my mom believed in different colored vegetables because they had different, co different co um, uh, vitamins and minerals in them. And, uh, you know, vegetables and, and a starch and a protein. And oh, you, you got that. You How lucky you were. Yeah. No, yeah. I wasn't. We never had any candy at the table. I never saw a candy bar until I went to, to high school. Oh. Never. Oh. <laughs> no, poor baby. Oh, I don't know. So, well, we should bring a big one out here and watch oh, you eat it. Watch it just go I right to your like panty. I don't like them. I hate to say it. I don't like them. So, Francis, do you eat all I, the wrong I, things? I think I Pardon? ate your do you share. Eat, do you eat all the wrong things? Well, no, no she well, does. Yeah, well, yes, I do. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> not, not all the time, no, but being born the South, of course, Anne was born there too. Well, so she's a better disciplinarian than I am. You look, but, are you kidding? You look fabulous. I just want to know how you do that when you eat southern foods because the South would be, if I lived in the South, I'd be 500 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> well, as Deanie says, I have to agree with her. I think genes have a lot to do with it. And my mother died a couple of years ago at the age of 91. She was still a size 8, but this lady ate everything in sight. And um, I'm just hoping I will continue to take after her. No, I, I don't eat junk all the time, but I do like things that you're not What is your eat. downfall? Oh, chocolate. <laughs> chocolate? Yes, an old coconut cream pie. Oh. Okay, that's Ice good. I, I need to hear these things. Ice cream. So do you exercise regularly? Do you do anything? Yes, that I do. I'm not driven to it, but I, I do. I'm, and I've always been rather active, but um, either walking or swimming and... Uh, um, and then what I call maintenance exercises, that's to try to keep your act together. <laughs> and they're so boring, but they've paid off. I yeah. Think. What about Health you, Ann? Do you work out a lot? Yes, I try to now, Do much you? more so than I ever did. I keep reminding myself I have to get up with every passing year. I have to get up a little bit earlier, work a little bit harder. <laughs> but I, too, fall off the wagon. So what do you do? I mean, to fall into a what pint of ice cream do do? every once in a while. I take a step class and I do aerobics and even a little uh, weight training. Do you really? Yes. Well, my husband started running over 30 years ago. Yeah, flex, flex that bicep. Let's feel. Is over it 30 years ago. <laughs> feel. I'm not really. going to fight with you, kiddo. Over 30 years ago, and to this day, he still runs. <laughs> A mile and a half every day. Yeah. Which I think is marvelous. Yes, it is. <laughs> so we, we, we nudge one another. When I say, I don't think I want to do that today, I say, yes, I think maybe, you know, you'll well, feel that's better. Good. Yeah, it's nice to have somebody and of course, that will do it with and you. And of course, you do feel better. That's the marvelous part. And I keep saying it helps the cobwebs, too. Yeah, well, yeah, it does. What about you, Ann? Do you work out? That's, I don't see you working out. my cobwebs, so. <laughs> Yes, I did the treadmill. Do you? Really? I have a treadmill in my bedroom. Not in those heels, though. 
Uh, sometimes. <laughs> Depends, because I do it usually at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning before I go to bed. Yeah, now, you're, you're an interesting per you're You're on Eastern time or something, yeah, aren't you? I'm just, I'm a theater person. I'm, uh... I think that started it all, you know, being in theater for so much and so long. I always ate my dinner at like 1 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So then you unwind from there. So I've just kept up that habit. So when do you go to bed? Anytime. Three is early. Anytime at three, <laughs> between 3 and 5 a.m. And then you sleep. Do you sleep till? I sleep until 10 or 11. If I, if I have something important to do, I get up at 11. But if I <laughs> or <laughs> No, I, I run around 11. And, and, you know, is Robert on the same schedule? Oh, no. <laughs> We've been married 41 years. You make a few concessions, you know. <laughs> so maybe this is the secret to your marriage. This could well, be it. You only see each other for three hours a day. <laughs> that's what he says, that as a matter of fact. That could probably be it. That's what he says. We're, we're going to be back in a minute with more from our classic beauties. <laughs> Blindfold, monsieur? No. Cigarette? No. What do you want on your tombstone? Pepperoni and sausage. Tombstone pizza, Pierre! New Tombstone Original Pizza. Its spirited, zesty sauce gives it that in-your-face tombstone taste. What do you want on your tombstone? Napkin? No. After my car accident, I could barely press the button to raise my hospital bed, much less drive across town to see an attorney. I needed a personal injury lawyer who could come to me right away, in the hospital or, or even at home if I needed it. Because if somebody didn't start working on my case, I might not have had one left. So I called Jacoby and Myers. Call 1-800-97-LEGAL and pay no fees until you get paid. Jacoby and Myers. Now, stop intruders before they enter your home with the personal alarm system. Ensure your safety while traveling with the personal alarm system. Childproof danger zones such as bathroom and kitchen areas. And for you midnight snacking dieters. For the protection of your home, business, and loved ones, order the personal alarm system today. A million one uses with a money-back guarantee. Order your personal alarm system today. Visa MasterCard orders call 1-800-686-6450. 1-800-686-6450. When I got out of high school, I needed a job, and that's what I got. Like a lot of people, I found out how some jobs can go away, like that. Now, I'm a heating, air conditioning, and refrigeration technician. I train for it at Lincoln Tech. Now, I've got a skill that no one can take from me. I don't need the job. The job needs me. Call Lincoln Tech for a free brochure on heating, air conditioning, and refrigeration careers. 1-800-331-1009. 1-800-331-1009. Now they're ready for snack cakes. They'd eat them all the time, if I let them. When I do serve snacks, I always serve Hostess. Fruit pies, cupcakes, and Twinkies. Because Hostess stands for freshness, they love that moist, springy cake and creamy filling. Hostess fruit pies, cupcakes, and Twinkies. Did that. and Ann Jeffries. I, you know, to all of us baby boomers, you are the hostess lady, aren't you? Well, isn't that nice that you remember? <laughs> you know, my introduction to hostess was when I was a little girl, and when my mother used to pack my lunch for me for school, in my brown bag every once in a while, I would find a package of chocolate cupcakes. And that was so. a big treat. Oh, it was a big treat, of we, course. Our whole audience is chowing down, actually. As Good. And I wanted to give these to you, Dina. This is um, because <laughs> you were so deprived as a child. There's a Twinkie for your right bun. You know, I've never had one. Yeah, and there's a chocolate cupcake for your left I've bun. I've never even seen one of these We'd before. like you to open those and eat them now, because we want to watch your butt go <laughs> like that. <laughs> we all want to watch it happen. It, Who has it questions happen, up here? I don't say. <laughs> Santa. What's your question? Um, I'm just wondering from any of you, um, what was your favorite role, either theater or movie or television? Gosh, have you all had a favorite role? Theater, movie, or television. Well, 
Um, I can tell you what the most fun I ever had in my life was. See, there are all these singers here. I'm, I'm a singing <laughs> actress, or an act, uh, I don't know what I am. I went to a course, through a course, which was for actors who can't sing and want to work in musicals. And by George, somebody hired me in a musical. <laughs> and that was the best year, uh, 13 months of my life, my professional life. What did you do? I had a wonderful time. What did you sing? On Your Toes. Oh, yeah? And I, I sang two, two duets. One was called Too Good for the Average Man, and the other one was Mother Told Me. And my friend Franny here <laughs> went, came and, and uh, auditioned for the national company. I'm the and the road company, Dean and Merrill. She, she played my part. <laughs> You're the road, the road company, huh? <laughs> well, she was responsible for my getting to audition for it, and I was in the national company with Leslie Carroll. Yes. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. Who else had a question down here? <laughs> Questions? <laughs> yeah, stand up. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yes? I have a question for Frances Bergen. Yes. Um, did you... How did you feel towards the Murphy Brown thing with the ex vice president Dan Quayle? Oh. oh well, did you keep abreast of that whole Dan Quayle Murphy Brown thing, <laughs> or did you uh, get bored <coughs> along the way there somewhere? You mean the, the situate the subject that was brought up about unwed mothers? Yeah. Uh, and on well, unwed how did I mothers. feel about it? Yeah. Well, I could see both points of view. Um, but Were you amazed by the amount of controversy that that created, oh, that, that a, a television show and, the, and Washington sad. should actually... <laughs> no, it, it was just unbelievable. It was yeah. absolutely phenomenal and uh, ridiculous. <laughs> Did Candace feel the same way? Uh, she was absolutely stunned by the reaction yeah, to Yeah, I yes. would think so, and, uh, to be stuck in the middle of a... Yeah. What, what did you want to say? She handled it really well, was Thank what you. she did. Yeah, it was she was really stuck good. in the middle of a giant mess there, yeah. though, wasn't she? Yeah. yeah. Really? Thank you. you have a question? Stand up. I'll come down to your level for you. Certainly. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Actually, um, here, let me tower above no, you. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, this is for Ann Jeffries. I was um, curious as to the special effects in Topper, whether you... Um, how, how they handled that? How did they do that? Because that was kind of progressive for the time. Oh, there were so many ways. We had the best uh, special effects person from films, because we shot them like a film. But, oh, there were all sorts of things. There were glass shots. There were reflection shots. There were wires, uh, there were pop-ins and pop-outs, if you know what that is. It was, I used to tell little kids, they'd come up and ask me, and I'd say, well, I take black pills to disappear, <laughs> and I take white pills to reappear. <laughs> they, they bought it. So you were responsible for that whole psychedelic thing that happened in the late 60s. Why? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take a break. More to come. We'll be back. <laughs> Meet the men who put the sizzle in your favorite daytime soaps from General Hospital and the Young and the Restless and Days of Our Lives on the next Vicky. If you need light bladder control protection, like I do, let me share something. I was using maxi pads. They were the right size, wrong protection. Then I found poise pads from Depend. And they're made especially for our needs. Poise pads are small, like the leading maxis, but they absorb 50% more. And Poise has an amazing absorbent layer that locks liquid in. Finally, the protection I need, the size I want. Poise pads from Depend. Mix nuts never give you enough of your favorite nuts. But new Fisher favorites are all favorites. Pecans, almonds, peanuts, lightly coated with luscious flavors. Toffee. Honey Blaze, Praline, plus large whole cashews, so... That's my favorite. No, that's my favorite. Every nut is your favorite. New Fisher favorite. It's Fisher it's just For allergies that hurt, Benadryl Allergy Sinus Headache combines maximum strength relief for sinus pain and pressure with the histamine blocker Benadryl. Benadryl Allergy Sinus Headache from Park Davis. Every three-quarter ounce craft single is made from five ounces of milk. How do they do that? They take the slice and make it into a rocket, and they shoot it to the Milky Way. And when it gets back, it's busting with milk. Milk makes craft singles taste great. K R A M C. Why can't something work like my soft cleanser without leaving all this grit? Can't anything clean soap scum better than this? Here's your guy, an old friend doing another great job. Mr. Clean Bathroom cleans to the shine. 
Disinfectant liquids can leave soap scum, while soft cleansers don't rinse away all their grit. But Mr. Clean Bathroom cuts through tough soap scum, leaving nothing but the shine. Full strength or in the bucket, Mr. Clean Bathroom cleans to the shine. Accepting yourself as a mature adult means eating a nutritious cereal and realizing part of you still cries, Get me frosting! But that's okay. We can overcome these urges. We can deny ourselves fat and salt as long as we repress our feelings about taste. I want taste! Easy. With Kellogg's Frosted Mini Wheats, you can have it all. For the adult in you, whole grain wheat, no fat or salt. For the kid in you, lightly frosted, great taste. I'm glad I've analyzed what I really want. The frosting! Anne Blythe and Anne Jeffries, all survival survivors and all still gorgeous and all still going strong. What are you girls up to now, Dina? What are you doing? Well, I've got a, a film that's going to be coming out one of these days called Suture. And I'm vice chairman of RKO Pictures, so that keeps me happy when I'm not otherwise gainfully employed. <laughs> Does that, that must keep you pretty busy, It actually. keeps me very busy. I travel a lot with my husband all over the world. We're going to be developing entertainment complexes in the emerging economies of the world. Where we've got nine films that are on our slate for next season. And uh, we have a, um, a domestic distribution company that works out of New York. Good for you. Francis, what are you very busy to nowadays, besides being grandma to Chloe? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that takes a lot of time. Yes. <laughs> you ha um, actually, you have another child, too, that we didn't mention at all here. Oh, Candace yes. does have a younger brother I named <laughs> Chris Edgar Bergen. Who is alive and well and is a. Uh, uh, he's alive and well. He's a video editor. He's right. always had offers to be on the other side of the camera, but he's never been interested in that part of it. So, uh, and there's quite an age difference, but um, that was good. It's like raising two only children. Yeah, right. So now, what is Francis up to nowadays? Well, uh, I think it's May 30th. There's a film uh, called Made in America, uh, which I have a part with uh, Whoopi Goldberg and Ted Danson. And um, that's Now, is this the movie where their romance sort of started, that rumored romance? Well, I didn't... I don't remember. <laughs> you don't know? I was just curious if that was true or not. Or... Uh, I don't really know. Uh, there is... Um, well, I wouldn't say exactly romance in the in the film. They become very good friends. But, yes, um, I wasn't talking about the film. <laughs> <laughs> Made in America. Okay, and what about you? What are you up to? Well, Bill Hayes and I have been doing an act of lovely, lovely music, all kinds of music for the past few years. We recently did an engagement in New York at Rainbow and Stars, high atop Rockefeller Center right back in the same building where I started when I was six. And wow. we had a wonderful time. What's the name of the show? Well, it's just an evening of elegant music. With Ann and Bill. That's yes. It. What about you, Ann? What are you up to? Oh, I'm busier, busier than a blind dog in a meat shop. I have so many things going, <laughs> so many things to do. Thank goodness, because I would just die otherwise. You know, I had, right quick, I have to tell you about Dina Merrill. Every time I came up for a role and I saw Dina Merrill's name up there, I just quit because she always got it. <laughs> I'll get you later. But I, I have, um, I work for American Movie Classics as an ambassador, and I do uh, Wednesday matinees for them, intros and outros. And I work for Home Shopping Club. I sell jewelry, and I'm also, yes. Are you wearing I'm, it? Yes. Yes. And I'm going to be, uh, I have a new cosmetic line coming out. Uh, it's, um, the first one is a treatment cream for the maturing skin, you know, help us to firm our skins up. I've been working on it for a long time, and I'm very pleased with it. We should come up, but I ha I, that's home shopping too. I'm doing that through them. Maybe into the department stores later. Good I'm so deal. busy with all my charity things. You know, I work for Child Help USA, which is abused children. Well, you all do a lot. Share of for retarded yeah. children and Society of Singers for We Singers, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just so many. It just keeps me busy, and I just thrive on it. I just think you have to keep going all the time. We stop, they'll catch up with us. You know. That's it. That's right. Stop rusting, you drop. Resting leads to rusting. Uh, yes, absolutely. Right. So we'll good be back shame. in just a minute. <laughs> Taking a break. <laughs> Every three-quarter ounce craft single is made from five ounces of milk. How do they do that? They take the slice and make it into a rocket, then they shoot it to the Milky Way. And when it gets back, it busts in with milk. Milk makes craft singles taste great. K-R-A-M-C. I take a bite of this.
this raspberry twist and I'm dying. You're laughing? This thing is out of this world. Maybe someday you'll know how this feels. A Danish like this could only be Antimans. Now, White Cloud is Charmin Ultra. Oh! Oh, <laughs> Mr. Cloud, I can't find my White Cloud anywhere. That's because I've replaced it with new Charmin Ultra. Why? I teamed up with Charmin to make something even better. Oh, it can't get better than White Cloud. Feel. Soft as White Cloud. And even thicker. It is better than White Cloud. I never thought I would say that. <gasps> White Cloud is now new Charmin Ultra. Everything you love about White Cloud. Only better. This is Medieval Time, Skinner and Tournament, the show of legend. It's hour after hour of feasting and festivity. From the spectacle of sport to the thrill of the joust, Medieval Times, Dinner and Tournament in New Jersey near the Meadowlands Sports Complex. For reservations, call 1-800-828-2945. A car accident can do more than immediate physical harm. It damages you, your family, and your future. It brings a feeling of helplessness that can break apart your life. If you've been injured in a car or other accident as a result of someone's negligence, don't give up. The law firm of Fuchsberg & Fuchsberg has helped over 20,000 accident victims. Your call and consultation are free, and there's no fee unless you get results. So pick up the phone and call 1-800-SOS-LAWS. That's 1-800-SOS-LAWS. Wiss wants your worst. With three teenage sons, we're talking the real worst. But we're talking new double power Wiss. One of them blew up a burrito. And doesn't toss the salad a stupid expression. Every wash load is a collection of stains, and nothing gets out stains better than new double power whisk. Oh, good, a late entry. It's so thick with power, half as much cleans the worst wash load. Even the grease is gone. Trust me, they're you. Only cleaner. New double power whisk. When you get out the worst, the rest is easy. Jonelle Flash Finish dries nails in less than a minute, adds luster as it hardens nail enamel to reduce chipping and cracking. It's about time. Flash Finish from Jonelle. For hair color that thinks it's a conditioner, ask your professional stylist for Shades EQ Color Gloss from Redken, the power behind beautiful hair. What you girls would have been if you hadn't have been in show business? What would you have done, Tina? Well, really what I'm doing now is being entrepreneurial and helping to build a company. That's something that I would have loved to have done if I hadn't been an actress. And also, I might have been a pro tennis player. Okay. <laughs> what about you, Francis? What would you have done? I would love to have written advertising copy, glamorizing places maybe I've never even seen. Making really? Making it sound wonderful. What about you, Anne? I'd hope to be a better tennis player and paint more. Anne, what about you? Well, I always wanted to be a doctor. Really? Uh-huh. Any or particular a... kind of doctor? Mm, just a general practitioner. Take really? care of everything. I've always been very, very interested in people and their problems, physical and mentally. And, and uh, that's what I wanted to be. My mother said I was going to be an opera singer. No kidding. Yeah. Well, this has been a great fun. Thank you all. I would have been a dental hygienist, by the way, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Why does everybody laugh at that? Have a wonderful day. We love you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you, I'm Magnus. If you like what I'm wearing, kids, go get it there. He'd move heaven and earth to save a lost soul. Stay tuned as Michael Landon travels the highway to heaven. Next.